Hi students, welcome to iTutor. I'm Chigo KR, your science teacher. And today we're going to learn chapter 1, which is Introduction to Scientific Investigation. So the first topic is about science is a part of daily life, alright? So what is it all about? Now almost all our daily activities are related to science, okay? And these are called as natural phenomenon. Anything which is non-man-made occurrence is called a natural phenomenon. So first thing first, let's look at the examples of natural phenomenon in your syllabus. Example, the first one is warming of the earth by the sun. Number two, formation of fruits and flowers. Number three, flotation of the ice on water. Number four, reproduction and growth of animals. Number five, occurrence of natural disasters such as tsunami. And the last one are the changes in the season. So these are the six examples of natural phenomena which I've taken to share with you all, all right? Now let's look at the second part which is the most common question many students ask me, Sir, what is science? Now science is a systemic knowledge of a natural phenomena. Which means what the scientist does is the scientist will go and investigate how the natural phenomena happens. All right? This knowledge is obtained to observations, experiments, analysis carried out by the scientist. So the key word here is systematic knowledge, which means it's like your experiment, like your Amali experiment. When you do your Amali experiment, first you state the problem followed by the variable, followed by the hypothesis and things like that. So these are the knowledge that the scientists need to know. Number three, scientists are experts who carry out scientific research. And the last one, what they do? They search for the source and solution to questions related to the natural phenomena. So these are the jobs of a scientist. Next, what are the importance of science? Now, I've listed down a few important points here and you need to know this because this is very important for your monthly exam, all right? Now, of course, science provides knowledge to humans, okay? It provides good knowledges. Why is it like this? Why the lighting has got light, all right? Why the fan is moving? So these are all knowledges related to science. So what are the benefits if you have this scientific knowledge? I have listed out four points. Number one, it helps us to understand ourselves and our environment. Number two, help us to solve our daily problems. Number three, contributes to new discoveries and intention or invention on new technologies. And the last one, D, of course, it opens up opportunities for science basic careers. Now, many students ask me, sir, I love science. What are the science basic careers that I can go into? That's where we are coming to that part shortly. First, let's look at the field of science. Now, the field of science is very wide, okay? It's not only you just study one thing. It's huge. It's massive, huge, all right? And a few areas we are going to look at right now in the fields of science, starting with the first one, which is zoology. So what is zoology? Zoology is basically the study of animals. Number two, we have something to do with forensic. Forensic is something like CSI, study of evidence in a crime scene. Number three, we have oceanography, which is the study of properties and the phenomena at the sea. Number four, astronomy, study of the objects in the universe. Number five, pharmacology, studies of the medicine. Number six, microbiology, studies of microorganism. Number seven is geology. Geology is someone who studies on stones and minerals on the earth. Followed by physiology, the studies of the human body system. Then we have botany, which is the study of plants. And the last one is engineering, which is the study of the application of physics in mathematics in a situation. So these are the areas in science. So no matter what, if you love science, these are the industries you can look at. All right, next, many students will also ask me this question. Sir, I love science. What are my careers? Where can I branch out in the science field? All right, let's check out, yeah? So science is basically open, all right? It's basically open. You can work almost everywhere, all right? Let's look at one by one, huh? First, careers in science, the first one we have is doctor. So what are the most suitable subjects you need to study if you want to study doctor? We have biology, 
biochemistry, psychology, and physiology. Followed by the second one, which is engineering. Engineering, we have physics, mathematics, and computer programming. Number three, we have astronaut. Astronauts, you need to study astrophysics, astronomy, cosmology, and computer science. Followed by pharmacies. A pharmacist, we need to focus on chemistry, biochemistry, and molecular biology. Geologists, we have geophysics, geobiology, and hydrogeology. Followed by forensic experts, you need biology, chemistry, biochemistry, and criminology. Followed by zoologists, we have ecology, environmental science, and genetics. Microbiologists, we have chemistry, biology, biochemistry, and genetics. And the last one is oceanographer. Basically, we have geology, environmental science, chemistry, and physics. So these are the industries where you're looking at, all right? These are the careers of science and the subjects that you need to study. All right, moving on. Something new in this year's syllabus. This is the latest science syllabus. It has just been implemented in 2019. Innovation in technology, all right? So what is technology? Technology is an application. It could be an app, it could be a machine, but the key word here is to fulfill the human's basic needs and wants, okay? So innovation in technology helps us to solve problems or to carry out certain tasks in our daily life. Basically machines, for example, washing machine is to help you wash the clothes. Car is to bring you move from one place to another place easily and fast, all right? So these are examples of technology. So in your exam, the most common question they ask you is, what are the importance of technology, all right? What are the importance of technology? So I've listed down three important points here. First, point number one, it increases productivity, efficiency, and quality of life. Number two, it solves problems such as environmental pollution, outbreak of disease. And the third one, it also increases safety and human health, okay? So these are the three important points you need to know, all right? And that's for 1.1. So the second one is the most important thing in your school, which is the lab, all right? Your science laboratory, all right? Now, of course, the lab is being used by scientists to carry out various experiments. And, you know, there are various types of chemicals in there. You have apparatus and you have other facilities. So what I want to teach you right now in the next part in your syllabus is about the apparatus. Why? You need to know what are certain apparatus look like and what are their functions. Now, let's look at the first few apparatus, all right? Apparatus and its function. So apparatus is a special tool which is basically used to carry out experiments. And here are a few things. What I want you to do is you need to write down the apparatus name and also the function. Starting with the first picture. Now this picture is a test tube and the function is to hold small amount of substance. All right? Now remember, the key word here is the word small amount. Number two is this. It is slightly smaller than the test tube. Now many students think that this is a test tube. No, this is a boiling tube and the function is to hold or heat a small amount of substance. Next, number three, we have the beaker. The beaker function is to hold chemicals or to collect liquid. The next is the filter funnel. So the filter funnel is used to separate insoluble solid from a liquid with the help of a filter paper. Now I want you to pay attention to the word insoluble solid. It means a solid which is not soluble in water. For example, sand. If you have a glass of sand water and you pour inside here, the sand will be stick to the filter paper and the balance will be poured down, which is the liquid. But this thing you can't use for something which is soluble like salt. You can't separate salt from water by using this method. All right. Next, we have the bell jar. So the bell jar is to separate an experiment set up from the surroundings. So basically, when there's an experiment and you do not want to get oxygen or any other gases involved, you put it there and you put the bell jar on top of it. It's to separate it from the surroundings. Next, we have the glass jar to collect gas. 
followed by the crucible to heat a uh, solid directly. Next, we have the conical flask to hold chemical or correct liquids. Next, the same thing like conical flask, but the bottom part is round. We call it as a flat bottom flask. And the function is to hold chemicals used in preparation of gas, which does not involve heating. Followed by the measuring cylinder. Now, measuring cylinder is to measure liquid, but the accuracy is one centimeter cube. Followed by the round bottom flask, which is to hold chemicals used in the preparation of gas which involves heating. Next, a throw to hold water when collecting gas. This is what we use to hold test tube. It's called a test tube holder and the function is to hold test tube while we are heating it. Next, a wire gauze. Now, this is used on a tripod stand where you place something on top of it for the heating process. It's called a wire gauze and the function is to conduct excessive heat during heating process. Evaporating dish is to evaporate a liquid from a solution. Pipette is also used to measure liquid, but in a very small amount and it is accurate. A test tube rag is to support the test tube vertically. So basically you have a holder, you put in the test tube there and it holds it well. Followed by the burette is also to measure liquid, but it have an accuracy of 0.1 centimeter, which means this is the most accurate tool or apparatus you can use to measure liquid. A retort stand, the function is to hold and support apparatus during the experiment. All right. And the last one is the tripod stand. The function is to support apparatus during the heating process. So this is the tripod stand. On top of it, you put the wire gauze and the apparatus for the heating process. All right. That's about 1.2.